Holy Dickens, Kevin Breen with Garage Boxing. We're on the scene at the Irvine Marriott, and we bumped into somebody special. Um, it's Anne Marie Lynch. She's a media mogul to be, and, and she's moving here and there, and she knows her boxing, and that's what we love. So, hey, welcome to the show. Thank you. And it was nice talking to you earlier, and we pulled you aside because, you, like I said, you know what you're talking about, and you're talking about, you know, the fights here, it's a local level. You're, you're covering a guy and you saw him fight tonight, you're, you're following him. Tell us about that. Well, I think it's pretty exciting when you have a kid who's had almost 100 amateur fights come out and have his first professional fight. It's a whole different mental game. It's nice to see the transition for him, especially without the gear. Because uh, as much as an amateur wants to say he's ready to go pro, and he's probably been sparring with pros, that time he gets cracked for the first time or his nose gets broken or, you know, gets... It's a good shot to, you know. Different story. To the job. It's a totally different game. So I was really happy to see um, him come out and have a, a big win for his first one. He was and, impressive, you know. Yeah, well, he's got a boxing family tradition. His family's from uh, Tijuana and from Mexicali. And they came up here, and um, his older brother fights for Baba Room and Top Rank. So um, they're pretty amazing because they don't have a gym, they train in their backyard. And by training in their backyard, they remind me very much of Julio Cesar Chavez, who would, you know, have his fights in the dirt, you know. And uh, I just love the grit of that, and I'm, I'm really hopeful for that family and for him. Well, you know, it's it's just cool because that's what you do. You 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 know, you're, you're a documentary and like person and, and a media, like I said, person. And you know, you also mentioned that we've got a movie happening yeah. that that tell us about that that sounds and it's boxing yes yes you know when I when I was approached about writing a film um, about the fight world initially I thought it would be MMA because I had lived so intensely inside of it for NBC sports doing all behind the scenes stuff um, but it would eventually came down to is I wanted to do a story about a young Mexican man who is fighting to become you know a, a, a world champion one, because of the extensive success with Mexican-Americans and Mexicans in boxing, but um, also because of, like, there was this moment when I was behind the scenes with Gil Melendez and Josh Thompson, and it was so powerful. Josh's father had passed, and he was waiting to take the belt away from Gil Melendez, and he was all by himself in the room, and, and I really didn't think he was going to win the fight because he was in there hacking up a lung. He was just, he was a mess. And then I saw the transition of him from the second he had like stepped out into the arena and then he had just become the guy who was going to take the belt away from Gil. And, and you could see it on his face and he really owned that fight. But Gil was behind the scenes with his father who's this, this wonderful man and, um, and you know his son lost and it was hard for him. And so one father is absent and the other one is there. And it was this telling story to me about what it what basically happens with a man and uh, the average guy who is in the fight world. And Oscar De La Rie even told me he said that he felt like he was always looking for the approval of his father. So um, I thought it was pretty compelling after the fight. Josh said he you know he felt his father in the ring with him and everything. So it's moments like that that give you fodder for fiction. And that was that was a. a a very strong moment for me in, in being behind the scenes for, for Latino fighters and thus brought forth the concept of Latino fighter for a movie. Yeah, like you said, you know, there's a lot of popularity in the sport, obviously, in the Latino culture, and I'm sure it's going to be interesting. Is there like a time frame where we're going to see that maybe come to fruition, or is that just like, you know, one of your many projects. I mean. No, this is going to be a main main project for me. I'm with Michelle Shane, who uh, did iRobot and Catch Me If You Can and mm -hmm. has a litany of other films. A uh, very seasoned executive producer. And um, he, in fact, I'm like really excited to be working with him because he has the taste that I have for film. So I like the way, what he picks to choose to make. And um, he's smart business-wise, and when I presented a business plan to him and how it could be made and why it had to be Latino and two Latino men, like other studios said, no Latinos. And I was like, <laughs> you realize that Latinos fight and that Latinos that's, like to watch fighting. What's wrong market. with you? But they were like, no Latinos. Put a white guy or a black guy in there. And I was like, this, isn't, this mm -hmm. is a story about two Mexican-American boys fighting their way out of the hood and, and how... How could you even think about putting another race in there because it doesn't work? Think of East LA, okay? 
think of Albuquerque, think of all the neighborhoods with a uh, dominant Mexican population and it, it's, it was just important to me as you can imagine, <laughs> especially if you love like Mexican style of boxing. As long as you don't have Mario Lopez as a lead, I think, <laughs> I think we'll be okay with it. So, well, hmm. The lead is 18 years old, but 20 years old, you know, it's yeah. like, we, yeah. I don't know, who do you think should star in it? Shit, I don't know. Probably a no-name, you know I mean? That's what I thought, yeah. And, uh, you know, maybe it'll be, uh, I don't know, um, who, who knows, uh, I can't even think of it, like a young Latin yeah. kid. It's like, it's like a, a, ro a Rocky movie for Latinos, you yeah. know, it's really, it's a nice story, it's a family story. Rocky was a clean story. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and you say that, and, and boxing has been recently, it, it, just, it seems like for a long time has recently has been said that it's dead. And that you know, it's like, and, and you've been covering both. You mentioned uh, De La Hoya, and that's where kind of you that mm -hmm. time frame when you were you first doing your thing. Um, talk about it. Have you seen the thing come up? You've seen the rise of MMA. You've seen uh, boxing resurgence. I mean, what's happening now, like with respect to that? Well, I mean, I called the president of HBO Sports Documentaries in 2005, and he was horrified by me when I said I wanted to do an MMA documentary about Boss Rutten, and I was talking mm. to him about, you know, maybe getting it distributed. He was like, God, no. you know, because they're totally boxing. Um, the acceptance of MMA as a sport has changed drastically and the sponsorship for MMA has come along but what hasn't changed within MMA is the quality of the athlete as compared to boxing whereas amateur division the amateur level of boxing really vets out guys and they have a hundred fights so by the time they become professional I mean they mm -hmm. started training when they're eight years old with MMA and, and there's no amateur organization, you got a lot of guys that all they need is a connection to get on a fight card, on a small fight card, and might not necessarily truly be like that, a really world-class level fighter. Right. Yeah, you have your Matt Lindens, you have your Dan Hendersons, you have your Randy Coutures, the guys who were in the Olympic Games and wrestling. You have the guys out of Brazil who started doing jiu-jitsu when they were eight. Uh -huh. That's why they're so successful, you know. But for the most part, the American guy is not on a level of like a Fedor Emelianenko because he was doing Sambo his whole life. Of course he's going to be, it's natural for him to be in MMA. So that's what Sambo is, right. you know? So we have, we're catching up. Like, you know, I mean, once UFC bought out Pride and it opened up the doors for other athletes to come in, it would got kind of just look at who's holding the titles. We got a Canadian, we got all Brazilians, you know? And well, BJ Penny's from Hawaii. So mm -hmm. yeah, we got an American in there. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it's interesting you say we. It's like, you know, is it hard? I mean, you, it sounds like you're more of, a, of an MMA fan yeah. than, than a boxing fan. No, you know, it's really, it's just that I did so many years. I created this uh, thing, a web portal called MMA Today with Boss Rutten as a host, and it was really successful, and I, you know, worked 60 hours a week on that. And Does it actually, around? No, um, I actually, it... Uh, Unfortunately, my mother got sick and she died and I had to go home and take care of her and stuff. So I couldn't produce that anymore. It was just too much for me at the time. But it was I had six million unique users in less than four months live by Google Analytics. So it was a successful site and I was happy to see it that way. But when my mom died, I didn't have the energy to continue with that 60 hour work week and what it took. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started working for NBC again, working in the Olympic year. Um, and that was a mellower pace. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually, you know, you tell me the pace that you, you, you do different things. It's not just sort of mm -hmm. the boxing or MMA beat. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, we talked about we talked about triathlon mm -hmm. and triathlete mm -hmm. connection. I mean, you know, do you see other things? I mean, do you like a fan of NASCAR or something mm -hmm. random oh like that? Oh my God, or? I love all sports. I mean, mm -hmm. I just, I'm a sports junkie and I really don't have many conversations with people that are outside of sports and, and I'm a major Yankee fan. And I don't even want to talk to anybody but about anything but the Yankees during the month of October. <laughs> I have like everybody lined up for every post game conversation. Hideki, Hideki, he's over here now. No see, you know. I know. No, it's it's a. I was a lifelong athlete, and um, I, I guess I always was gravitating towards the combat sports. You know, hand hands uh, fighting, or I loved, always loved wrestling. Um, Boxing is, is a very sophisticated audience compared to MMA, and a large, big fight card like Manny and Oscar, or Manny and uh, anybody now is going to be, even Antonio Margarito and Miguel Cotto, or, you know, any of these guys, the, the vibe in the room is outstanding, and it's, it's just, you're not getting that in the US, 